Drummers who use triggers are cheating. Wait, what? Why are people so adamant and quick to say things like this? That's a pretty bold statement, and here's why. Let's get this out of the way. Music is not a competition. Leave your ego at the door, get off your high horse, and let's talk about why people are being triggered by triggers. Can't we just make music the way we want to and not the way everybody else thinks we should? I think of triggering as a way of enhancing your playing, especially at really fast tempos in environments that our acoustics aren't really cutting it and need that extra little oomph. For me, it's when people start editing the drum parts and quantizing them with elastic time that we really fail to capture the human performance aspect of drumming. Not only is it cheating the listener, but it's cheating the producer and the engineer who has spent countless hours in the studio learning proper mic placements and mixing techniques to make you sound great. So if you still think triggering your kick drum is cheating, I'd like to hear from you in the comments below and let's discuss why you guys think this way. But why are people saying that triggering your drums are cheating? To answer that question, I think it's because when you take an acoustic element and you replace it with a mechanical electronic sound, people automatically assume you suck or you have no technique or talent to create it. Sure, we could delve into the technicalities and say, oh, that guy uses triggers because he sucks or he doesn't have enough foot power to actually make an acoustic drum sound like that. Well, that's not necessarily true because when you change the sensitivity on your drum module, it becomes, well, more sensitive. You can hear every little mistake and misfire that you play and the harder you hit the kick drum, the more likely it is to misfire, which happens when you get double triggering. You still need to be able to play those fast fast kick patterns with precision and accuracy. At speeds of 250 plus BPM, you're going to lose power, it's a given. I've yet to hear a drummer play at those speeds acoustically without triggers. Now some of you are going to say, oh look at Virgil Donati. Well actually, yes I have, and he's playing around the range of 190 to 200 BPM. But this discussion is about drummers who are really pushing the extreme limits of BPM in the 250 plus range using like heel toe and really fast swivel technique. Triggering your kick drum or any drum for that matter does not make a sloppy drummer any tighter or better. You also hear people saying, well, if you can't play it on an acoustic kit, why bother playing it at all? Well, here's what I think. Go on tour with a death metal band and you tell me how audible your kick drum sound is at those speeds without triggers. In most cases, when I used to tour with Terror Horse, I used triggers. Now we also mic'd the kick drum up too and that was solely depending on the venue and if they had the gear to be able to back that. The guitar players had eight string guitars. Their tonal range just loved to eat up my kick drum sound. They just got buried live. Now we fixed this by meshing together the two signals, the acoustic signal and the triggering sample. We have that clicky attack from the trigger and then we have that nice natural acoustic bass drum sound from the microphone. With that being said, I'd like to end the discussion here. There's no denying the fact that there are many roads that lead you to the same destination. But what we need to understand is that Triggering your kick drum is not cheating. It is also not replacing the ability of the drummer to play his parts. Editing and replacing drum sounds are doing exactly that. Learn the difference between the two. Thanks so much, I'm Cameron. You guys are awesome for watching. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and come back for more hot discussions like this one. All right, Metal.